Hello and welcome back for Marble Making 101 here on the Matt Yasa channel. Today I'm doing an introductory course into marble making. My last video I did a simple marble stand. And so I thought this would be a good opportunity to go over the basics of marble creation. I have a clear rod of glass here with a blue zip tie, which is just to help you see it rotate. If I were to stop rotating in its liquid molten state, it would begin to drip down a bit like honey and fall on the desk. And so by rotating, it constantly redirects that drip back upward, causing it to gather up into a large sphere. But now the heavier it gets, the more it's gonna want to fall off the handle. And so I can only gather up to a certain size. So if I'm planning to make a larger marble, I'll use a larger rod. Not only will it be a bit easier, but the end result should be more optically clear. You can check out my recent glass egg video for some pretty large gathers. I also discussed how angling the marble up towards the ceiling or pointed down towards the floor will change the overall shape. Pointing it upwards will flatten it back into a cookie whereas the opposite will pull it back out more into a rod. Here, we're just gonna mainly focus on keeping it level, just very centered, very parallel to the earth's surface. This will actually help us round the marble out without the use of any extra tools other than our hands and maybe some tweezers later on. One thing I do like to point out once in a while on the channel here is that you don't really need a lot of equipment or fancy tools. Not to say that tools are bad, they're merely an extension of the body. And so that's why I like to focus on the hands first and develop those skills. And then when we pick up tools, there'll be a conduit for those skills, a conduit for our experience. And so I attached a rod to the other side. This is called a punty. It's merely a handle. Now, even though I've talked about cold and hot punties before, it's really more of a spectrum. A hot punty means it's fully melted in, all the way down to the molecular scale. Whereas cold punties are only somewhat melted in. Not all the surface is fully connected. And so they break off easy, which can speed up the marbling process. However, they also can cause some accidents as well. Bumping anything in your studio or merely accelerating the marble too quickly may jolt it enough to pop off the punty. And so I treat it sort of like a dandelion. You have to be really gentle with it. It is a tool. It does take some experience. And so for safety, I recommend sticking with the hot punty, at least until you've made your first batch of marbles. But now since my first side was rounded out during the gathering process, I'm going to round out the other side now as well. I'm going to try to go as far back with the heat as I can without losing stability on my punty. At this point, it's normally recommended to use the marble mold for your final shaping. However, as I said, we're focusing more on the toolless operations today. I also wanna give you a good example of how close you can get without that mold. I'll also be laying these clear marbles out on my desk to cool instead of using my kiln to help demonstrate that you can get a lot of practice done before you make that important investment on a kiln. Normally, smaller objects, even with a little bit of surface color, can safely bench cool. 
But for larger or more complex internal color work, like a vortex or implosion marble, they're more prone to cracking even inside the kiln. And so I'll be going over a few simpler techniques in this video, mainly lines, dots, and the more classic swirling ribbon pattern. I remember those from the old netted toy store bags. They're kind of the cheaper machine-made marbles, which never really caught my eye or interest when I was younger. It wasn't until later when I found lamp working and found out how cool marbles can actually be. I always just thought they were kind of silly before. Oh, how wrong I was. Right now, I'm just pulling out some stringers to draw on the glass. This is kind of equivalent to a pencil. However, you have to draw with it using heat. You can do more than just lines and dots as well, but I'm just keeping it simple for this video. I also haven't practiced marbling in a while. It's always good for a teacher to continually practice to keep their skills sharp. But now I chose cadmium colors because they changed to this red color before the natural orange glow. And so they can be easier to practice with, as you can see a wider gradient of heat. However, they can overheat, and so you have to be careful about raising the temperature too quickly. This will create bubbles in the surface of the glass, which tend to be a catalyst for even more bubbles. And that's where the tweezers come in handy to remove it before it causes any more issues. And so I'm going to draw three yellow lines on this little marble and then see how many red dots I can fit in between those. This is kind of a practice technique. I would start out with one line and maybe four or six dots. It can be rather difficult to keep things from globbing together, especially working on this small scale. I do make it look a little easy. But besides getting the color on there, it is good to try to get it as uniform as possible. Very straight lines with an even thickness and dots of the same size with even spacing in between. It's good to keep your eye on symmetry. If your second dot is larger, you need to remove some glass to make it smaller. If your third dot is too small, then you have to add a little bit more. In the worst case scenarios, if you make a mistake to one side, just repeat the mistake on the other side. Then again, working asymmetrical can sometimes work well too if you balance it right. But it's your project, it's your journey. Figure out what path is the most beautiful to you. And now I'll knock the marble off my punty you'll see how loosely it was attached. It took a small tap and only left a little mark to polish out in the flame. I'll use a larger rod in order to make a bigger marble. It can be pretty important to apply a base heat to the glass, or in this case the marble, before you begin to apply the color. Attempting to draw on room temperature glass can cause a lot of stress as it cools, which can lead to cracking. And so you want to bring the clear glass, your canvas, up to, but not quite, molten temperatures. You can preload your rods with a little heat as well, if you're working right off the rod like I'm doing here, to apply dots. You can see I'm going for uniform dots, all spaced out very evenly. And now other than the glass egg video, I haven't done any marble work for over a year. I mainly focus on a variety of techniques. I know it's normal for an artist to specialize in one area of expertise. This can help improve on the particular skills needed for that subject matter while allowing you to continually improve on the design to bring out a more and more successful piece. And so if you're interested in landscape painting, for example, it might not be as productive to venture over into portraits 
or into abstract. And unless you just have a love for the craft and you're trying to understand it better. And so I finished this black and white marble and I've only been using my center stage, which is about the equivalent of a $300 starter torch. So this is the size of marble you can expect to make with a beginner burner after a little bit of practice. And now I'll demonstrate the dot stack technique. This is one I personally haven't practiced, but I'll give it my best attempt here. I've laid my first set of dots in white. I'll melt those in and then come back in another color and lay a second set of dots on top of the first. This should give you a multicolored dot or a circle with an outline. You can attempt to add more color to increase the complexity of each dot or add another set of dots in between or next to the first set in order to increase the coverage over the marble. If you overlap the dots just right, you can get a sort of fish scale or pine cone kind of overlapping pattern. You can also rake the dots around or into each other to improve the design. I'm gonna keep it simple for this video and do a more detailed dot stack in a separate episode. And now I'll create a different design on the back half of the marble. You can continue the same design all the way around if you wish. However, decorating the opposite hemisphere in a contrasting way or with contrasting colors, I believe can really highlight both sides, kind of like two art pieces in one. But it's usually difficult to make the backside as attractive as the front. And that really applies to pendants as well. A person won't really look at the backside if they realize it's blank. They'll just flip it back around. But they always look. So make sure to put something there. And so what I've done here was laid a few blue striking lines, which are packed with silver. And then I went over those with a bunch of clear lines to protect it from striking. And then I'll strike it with a heavy reduction flame, which means a ratio of reduced oxygen to propane. You'll see the yellow candle tips from the torch get very long and wispy. This will reduce the silver, giving me whitish yellow colors except for the areas covered in clear glass, which will stay a darker blue. So it'll give me two contrasting colors on the same line. Next up will be the classic swirl pattern. My method for this one is pretty simple. I'm gonna lay down a couple of lines on some clear glass and then heat it up and give it a twist. This will create some ribbon cane which then I'll carefully gather up into a marble. I need to cover the other side of that line with clear glass. That way the ribbon works its way more to the center of the marble. I'll spin a little faster with one hand to start twisting it up and give it a little bit of a pull to keep it straight. I pulled it out a little too thin, but I'll start gathering up the end without trying to mess up the coil. I noticed as I was gathering, the space in between the ridges was kind of shrinking down. I think I'll have to do the next one on a larger scale with a bit less twisting. Sometimes the process can be a bit experimental to see what works right, which is one of the things I love about this craft. This time I'll try four different colors and a larger clear rod as well. I want to make a bigger ribbon marble. I'm not going to cover this one with clear glass on the other side of the color just to see what will happen. I'll connect up with a punty, apply some heat to the center and start to give it some gentle twists. And now if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit the like and share buttons. 
Sharing my videos is a good way to bring more people into the art and glass field. I also enjoy the occasional science experiment, so it's fun and educational. I'm also planning to incorporate a new topic into the channel this year, gaming. I'll be doing some video game related ideas along with some actual gameplay. And so for the pilot episode, I was thinking of an older retro game which uses multicolored blocks, which goes by the name of Tetris. And so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the Tetris episode. There's also the notification bell. Gotta click that bell and hit all. This helps notify you of my newer videos that are being uploaded so you don't miss any. They kind of go under the radar. And now with this marble complete, my last demo will be a multicolor technique. I've done this a couple times, most recently with the soft glass episode, but my favorite was the Jolly Rancher blowout. I made a multicolor jar using Jolly Ranchers. Or more specifically, sugar glass, which I found behaves very similar to normal glass however, at a much lower temperature. And so what I'm doing here is gathering up different colors onto the same rod, and then I'm gonna melt all those colors into a sphere. This is probably one of the more easier marbles to attempt besides the clear or solid color marble. So I would recommend practicing this one before the line or dot work. It's pretty straightforward, however, it might be a good idea to choose colors that are closer to the same composition or density, like a transparent red with a light transparent blue, or an opaque color, a solid color with another opaque color, like orange and yellow or orange and white maybe. But using a denser color next to a lighter one I find seems to cause the denser one to sink underneath the other, sort of overlapping the two. But at the same time, I recommend trying that also. It's always good to experiment and just see what can happen. That is one of my main goals for this channel, not just to teach glass scientifically, but to inspire others to find their creativity. And to be creative means you're a creator. You're a maker of beautiful things. And that's a great boost in one's confidence. The multicolor marble is looking pretty good. I think some of the colors did sink underneath or mix because of the density. You can see the three different colors here on the dot stack. And then the black spots on the back are where the clear glass was laid. Where the blue and white is from the original rod, which had a reaction because of the silver mixed in. With the large swirl, we can see three of the four colors, black, yellow, and orange. I'm not sure where the green went. The spiral is mostly on the outside, but does penetrate into the marble. It's one of my favorites. Here's a basic design you can practice. I would try to get the pattern a little more uniform, if you can. I made two smaller marbles out of that twisted rod. The swirl is mostly on the inside for this one. Lastly, it can be difficult to get a lot of detail crammed into a small surface. But I hope you've enjoyed this cramming session on marbles. Don't be afraid to give it a roll yourself with the knowledge found here on the Matt Yasa channel.